Hey Run Junkies, welcome to Runners Without Limits TV. And if you are a regular viewer here or a listener over on the podcast, you know how much I believe in the power of strength training for runners. In particular, the core is critical for healthy running. From the shoulders to the glutes, from the abdominals to the spine, the core is more than just having a six pack. It's about stability and strength to keep you running over the long So haul. today, I'm going to lead you through one of my favorite go-to core workouts around the world core. I thought this was appropriate. I've been doing this workout on and off for a long time. Whenever my running starts to suffer from lack of strength training or I start to feel a little soft, maybe in the middle. I know that I can incorporate this workout to build my form and my posture. It weaves in and out of my regular running routine every three to four months. I use it for about a month and then I put it away for a bit. Now I originally found this workout on the Beginner Triathlete blog. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to that original post. This is a short workout. It's 15 exercises. Working first the front of the core, then one side, then the back, then the other side, then finally back to the front with the twisting core muscles. Thus around the world. So start by doing 10 reps of each exercise, moving right into the next with little rest in between. As you get stronger, you might add a rep or two for each exercise, working up to 25 repetitions each. Now before I get started, a few quick notes on form. In order to protect the low back, engage your core by drawing your navel toward your spine. My friend Laura calls them the corset muscles. Imagine someone is tightening a corset behind you. Also, make sure you are breathing through each rep. Now, some of these moves might be a bit more complicated or advanced, so I'm going to show you an alternate version to get you started, and that will be in kind of an inset. The first exercise is the basic crunch. Lying on your back with your knees bent and your hands behind your head only for support. Lift your shoulders off the mat by contracting the front abdominal muscles. Tuck your tailbone up toward the ceiling slightly to avoid your low back coming off the mat. Do not pull up on your neck. Keep your chin off your chest, and if you want a little extra challenge, raise your arms toward the ceiling. The second exercise is the reverse crunch. Lift your legs off the floor and keep your knees bent at a 90 degree angle. Lift your shoulders off the floor, keeping your chin lifted. Engage your lower abdominals, known as the transverse abdominals, and lift and lower your legs to tap the floor with your feet. If this becomes too difficult, lower your shoulders to the floor. Hip lifts are the third move and the last for this first set. Raise both legs directly above you, hands to your sides. Contract your lower abdominals to push your hips off the ground. This is a very small move using just the low abs. You're not swinging your legs, you're pushing up with your hips. Try to keep from pushing against the ground with your arms. A slight bend in the knees is fine. Moving to one side, we are going to work the obliques. The first is the side crunch. With your knees bent, hips stacked, your bottom arm across your body and your top arm placed behind your head, use your top obliques, the side muscles of your torso to pull your shoulder toward your hip. Lift the top leg at the same time to make the move more intense. Next up is the side plank hip drop. Start in a plank position either on your elbow or up on your hand, whichever you prefer. Keep head, shoulders, hips, and feet in line. Drop your lower hip, then raise it back up again. You may keep your hand on your hip or above you. Other options are to hold a static side plank or bend your lower knee for more stability. Last up for this side is the leg lift. Lying on your side with your head resting on your arm and your lower knee bent for stability, flex your top foot and engage the top outer hip to lift as far as is comfortable. Keep the movement slow and controlled. 
These are those often neglected hip muscles that we notice when we do this kind of work. Now moving on to the back, shoulders, and glutes. Turning to face down, the next exercise is the push-up. Either from your knees or from your toes, keep your head, shoulders, hips, and knees in line, and drop your chest to the floor as far as you can, and still lift yourself back up. Try to keep your elbows as close to your waist as possible. Remember, there is no shame in doing push-ups from your knees, or if you have wrist problems, do a standing push-up against the wall. Alternating supermans are up next. Lie facing down with your arms and legs extended. Contract your spine and glutes to lift one arm and the opposite leg off the ground, then switch. That's one rep. Keep the movement controlled through all reps. Protect your back by engaging your abdominals. Last move facing down are the plank leg lifts. This is a pretty advanced move, so you might start with a basic plank either on your elbows or with straight arms. Start with a 30 second hold and move up to 60 seconds. For a more advanced move, also by the way my least favorite, hold a plank position lifting one leg off the ground, keep your hips level, and lift with your glutes. Lifting one leg then the other is one repetition. You may also do this with straight arms. You have one more alternative move and that is the bird dog. In tabletop position with your lower abs engaged, lift one arm and the opposite leg, then repeat with the other side. And since this is around the world core, it's time to do the other side. Oblique crunches are up. You should feel this in the muscles around your waist and your top hip. This helps with stability, especially on those long runs. Side plank with hip drops on the second side. Remember, if the hip drop is too intense, you can hold a static plank. For more of a challenge in that static plank, lift the top leg and hold it. Leg lifts are last and then we have one more set. Now, if you're thinking about 80s VHS workouts videos here, yeah, I get it, but they were definitely onto something. If you want more of a challenge, check out the card above for a more intense set. Lift that top leg using that hip. Turning back onto your back, we are in the home stretch and back prone on the mat to start. Three more exercises and these will get those side muscles firing. Next up is the heel touch. Lying on your back with your knees bent enough to where you can touch them with your fingertips, lift your shoulders off the floor and crunch side to side to touch one heel, then the other. Engage the transverse abs, those corset muscles, to keep yourself stable and keep your chin lifted. Movement is slow and controlled. Bicycle crunches are the next move and it's pretty standard. They're great for runners. Lying on your back with your core engaged to keep your low back from lifting off the floor, lift your feet off the ground and bend your knees to a 90 degree angle. Lift your shoulders off the floor and reach your left shoulder to your right knee, straightening your left leg. Return to neutral briefly, then repeat on the opposite side for one rep. Keep your elbows to your side and do not pull on your head and neck.
Last exercise, you guys, is the Russian twist. Sitting up with your feet on the floor, knees bent at a 90 degree angle, lean back with your core engaged. Your arm position is about comfort here. The longer the lever on your arms, the more challenging. You might also use a small weighted ball for more of a challenge. Nice work. Don't forget to cool down with some light stretching. I personally love the yoga poses, cat and cow. Breathe through a few rounds of this to loosen your core back up and congratulations. You just completed the around the world core workout. So that is the around the world core workout. What do you think? Please leave thoughts, questions, comments, and suggestions for future videos in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Also, check out this playlist right here for some of my favorite follow-along workouts. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Until then, remember you are a runner without limits. Happy running.